Alright guys, welcome back. In this video we're drawing more shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. In this case we have an overhanging beam with two distributed loads and a point load acting on it. So the first thing that we want to do before we draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram is we want to figure out what these reactions here are at A and B. And when we do the free body diagram it turns out that A is 5 kilonewtons down and B is 75 kilonewtons up. And now we can set up our shear force diagram and bending moment diagram below the free body diagram. And let's just throw on our grid lines here that are just going to mark the points of interest for us as we go along the free body diagram. So those points of interest are any times we have a point load or any time that a distributed load starts, stops, or changes. So you'll notice in this case, this is a point of interest because we have a, uh, a distributed load starting and also because we have a point load there. Those are happening at the same point, so we'll get to that in a second. All right, so what we want to do is we want to work at this uh, from the left-hand side. We're going to draw a free body diagram um, with our reaction support there. That's five kilonewtons going down. And we're taking a virtual cut just to the right of this, an infinitesimally close distance here from the support. So that means that the distributed load is infinitesimally small for the force balance. Uh, and then so for the force balance in the y direction, that means that we're just going to have to have five kilonewtons pressing up. And uh, where we have a internal shear force pressing up to the right of a virtual cut, that's opposite the positive sign convention, so that means that is a negative value. So we have negative five kilonewtons starting us off here. If we extend our shear force diagram just to the left, or basically just to this, to this marker here, um, because it will be the same on the left and the right actually in this case, so we're going to have to include our distributed load here. And uh, it's two meters worth of 10 kilonewtons per meter, so the total magnitude of that will be 20 kilonewtons pressing down. So now, uh, where we're at this marker, when we check our shear force, internal shear force, we have 20 going down, 5 going down, so we have to have 25 going up to the right of a virtual cut. So that's bringing us down to negative 25 kilonewtons. So where this was negative 5, this is going to be negative 25. And uh, this is just a nice linear change um, in the magnitude there. All right, in this region, nothing is happening to the beam in this region, so our shear force is going to stay constant 25 kilonewtons, uh, negative 25 kilonewtons across that region. And then the next point in interest, um, if we take the shear force, di or if we take the free body diagram just to the right of this point, then we're going to be including this point load and an infinitesimally small amount of distributed load, which will basically be zero. Um, so we're going to have to add on to our free body diagram uh, this value here of 75 kilonewtons going up. And so we have 75 going up, 25 going down. So that means that we're going to have to have uh, 50 units, 50 kilonewtons pressing down here for our internal shear force. And that is pressing down, that is the positive sense, or positive, yeah, the positive sense there. Uh, so that's going to bring us from negative 25 up to positive 50. So it'll be up there somewhere that will be positive 50. And we'll just connect that with a straight line, just like that. All right, now if we continue this method and we extend our free body diagram to the very end of the beam here, um, or just to the right, or just to the left of this marker basically, um, we're going to have to add on another two meters worth of 10 kilonewton per meter distributed load. So basically we're adding on another distributed load, which is also 20. So now we have 45 going down, 75 going up. That means that we're going to be left with an internal shear of 30 kilonewtons pressing down which is positive so that's going to bring us down to positive 30 so that line will be like that straight and uh, we'll mark that off as positive 30 kilonewtons now we do want to check to make sure that this makes sense that we've ended up at the right value here at the end of the shear force diagram so what we do is we draw our free body diagram of the right hand side and uh, we know that we have 30 kilonewtons pressing down. We're taking this virtual cut infinitesimally close to that free end, so the distributed load is not affecting it. That means that we have to have 30 kilonewtons going up for the shear or for the, the sum of forces in the y direction to balance. And that's going up uh, to the left of a virtual cut, so that's positive. And so we're saying that this should be positive 30. That's exactly what we have here on our shear force diagram, positive 30 kilonewtons. So up until now it appears that we have done it correctly so far. All right, so now let's move on to the bending moment diagram. Um, let's first notice that this region in here is the sum of a, a rectangle and a triangle for the area. And same with this region in here, 
If we want the area between this line and the axis, it's the sum of the area of a triangle and a rectangle. So now that we got that out of the way, um, where we're not having fixed rigid connections, uh, a beam like this, whether it's a simply supported beam or an overhanging beam, those free ends or those those non uh, those non fixed rigid connection ends are going to be having zero internal moment, uh, like we've been talking about in the previous couple of videos. So we know that the internal moment here is going to start at zero and end at zero, and if we don't get there, then we're going to know that we've made a mistake along the way. Okay, so looking at this, the area of this rectangle is the base times height. So we have two meters times uh, five kilonewtons. That's going to give us uh, 10 kilonewton meters. And then the area of the triangle here, that's one half base height. So one half times two times the height of that triangle is uh, 25 minus five. So that's 20 kilonewtons. Uh, and that's gonna give us 20 kilonewton meters for the total Area. So when we add those together, we get 30 kilonewton meters. That is the change in magnitude uh, from left to right as we move along the bending moment diagram. This area is on the negative side of the axis, so the change in magnitude is towards the negative side. And uh, where we have this uh, sloped line on the shear force diagram, that means that we're going to be getting a, uh, a parabolic curvature in that change in magnitude. So it's going to look something like this, where it comes out and then starts curving down parabolically. All right, um, now this next region here, it's also area is on the negative side, so the change in uh, magnitude is gonna be towards the negative direction uh, as we go from left to right. So this area is just rectangular, it's base times height, the base is two meters times the height is 25. Kilonewtons, that's giving us a change in magnitude or area here on the shear force diagram of 50 kilonewton meters, change in magnitude of 50 kilonewton meters. So this one here was, uh, this was at minus 30 kilonewton meters. So we're adding on another 50, it's gonna bring us down to minus 80 kilonewton meters on our bending, internal bending moment, and that is a nice straight line. Linear change in the bending moment diagram as we have this horizontal line on the shear force diagram. All right, so when we cross this boundary, we're now dealing with an area that it is on the positive side of the axis. That means that we're going to be getting a change in magnitude that's going to push us towards the positive side of the bending moment diagram as we go from left to right. So the area of the rectangle here is base times height is two times 30. That's equal to uh, 60 kilonewton meters. And then the area of the triangle section here is one half base height, so the one half times two. The height of that triangle is 20 units, so that is uh, 20, and when we add these together, we get a total area of 80 kilonewton meters, and then we go from 80 kilonewton meters to zero, and that's leaving us exactly where we were expecting to end. So it is going to be a parabolic curve, something like this, as we go and uh, go there into the end of the beam. All right, so now the last thing that we want to talk about would be the deflected shape of this structure after it's being loaded like this. So basically it, let's just draw a little sketch here. It started out looking like this where we had that hinge over there and a roller over here. And uh, maybe let's make this all dashed uh, just to make it a little less permanent because we just want to highlight that that was where it originally started and now we want to draw what its deflected shape looks like. Well, these pins are fixed, these pins and rollers are basically fixed to the ground and so they're not going to be moving. Um, and the other thing to notice here is our bending moment diagram does not cross the axis. If the bending moment diagram crosses the axis, then at that point, uh, at a distance of x meters away from that end, uh, you're going to be getting an inflection point. But this is all on one side of the bending moment diagram, so we're not getting inflection points, which means that this whole deflected shape has to have the same curvature, basically, if it's uh, concave up or concave down. Now, in this case, we uh, we also like to sometimes say that the deflected shape will somewhat resemble the, the mirror image of this. Uh, and if you had the mirror image of the bending moment diagram, we're going to get something that goes up, and then comes down, more or less, right? Uh, that's just a bit of a hint as to what this might look like, but in reality, let's think about this. We're pressing down on this. This part is going to be curving down like that. So this part would definitely have to be in a, in a down, like a concave down curvature, 
and that means that the only possible way for this all of this to stay concave down would be that the bending or the deflected shape would stretch up like this and and then connect in there because these points have to be rigid they are literally fixed to the ground and it's the beam that's moving not the rest of the earth um, so your professor might be asking you to draw this um, and this is exactly how it is it doesn't look like um, if this force was uh, quite a bit bigger you know it's possible that we could have been getting a curvature that goes down like this and then up and then down again um, but that would be indi ind indicated by a bending moment diagram that is uh, switching sides of this axis so this is the deflected shape of this structure when it's loaded like this and uh, as long as you can draw that and, uh, and kind of understand why that's happening um, uh, then that's great you'll be able to show your professor that on an exam